policy, which will be important uh, to your understanding here uh, from the University of Chicago as well. And uh, her undergraduate degree is from the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, we talk a lot about Texas as they invest, uh, Alex, unbelievable sums of money uh, into, uh, into, into mass transit you know, in their state, uh, including we always keep an eye on Houston, which is essentially now the population, if they haven't surpassed this, of Chicago. Uh, Dallas is obviously uh, somebody we look at. They now take their double-decker trains uh, out to, uh, to DFW, so they have a very excellent uh, commuter rail service out there. And in Austin, where you went to school, is, uh, you know, is sort of a world unto itself. And San Antonio, which is sort of a forgotten city often of, of Texas, uh, is one of the nation's ten largest cities. So uh, your knowledge of Texas will be helpful here. but. Uh, uh, you know, we couldn't have someone with a, a better background, uh, and we certainly welcome you to the board. Uh, thank you. All right. Audrey, uh, Madam Secretary, will you please Mr. call the Mr. roll? Mr. Chairman, I yes. think our new director would like to say a few yeah, words. Absolutely. Go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you very much. That's very kind of you, and I'm looking forward to being part of the RTA board and working with everyone. So thank you. Thanks, Alex. And uh, don't be sh don't be shy. None, none, none of your fellow board members are ever shy, <laughs> uh, either out here or on public. But I will t I will say this, Alex. Um, you know, you you have been in staff roles before. You will find the RTA staff uh, is as good and professional as you will have ever seen. Uh, they're a tremendous resource to all of us, and 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 use them. And they certainly. Uh, would, would love your input as well. So thank you. And you'll find the board, um, one of the things when I came here that I was, I wish the public could, could understand uh, the depth and the diversity uh, and, um, you know, just the knowledge that this board of directors brings because this is a, a tremendous board uh, and I think our writers and the taxpayers would have uh, even more confidence than they have today uh, if they knew who sat on this board, how conscientious this board is, uh, our attendance is almost nearly perfect. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's a, a tribute to, to the appointing authorities because you're all appointed uh, by somebody. Uh, and then, obviously, your, your professional uh, work ethic is, is beyond reproach. And I thank all of you for it day in and day out, uh, as do the writers, I'm sure. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Now you can call the roll. Okay. Director Colson? Here. Director Durante? Here. Director Frega? Here. Director Fuentes? Here. Director Groven? Here. Director Higgins? Here. Director Holt? Present. Director Cotel? Here. Director Lewis? Here. Director McGallis? Here. Director Melvin? Here. Director Pang? Director Ross? Present. Director Sager? Director Triani? Here. Chairman Dillard? Present. We have a quorum of 14 present with two absent. Thank you. And two of those are on the phone with their proper paperwork in order. Excellent. Um, our first item of, of uh, business is 3A, and that's the approval of uh, the minutes from uh, the meeting held on December 13th of 2018. Any comments on these? If not, can I have a motion and a second? Uh, Director Higgins uh, moves we adopt the minutes, uh, seconded by uh, Director Groven. Uh, Audrey, why don't you take in a ten, or take a, take the roll call so we have a baseline roll call? Okay, Director Colson, yes. Director Durani, yes. Director Frega, Aye. Director Fuentes, Aye. Director Groven, yes. Director Higgins, Aye. Director Holt, Aye. Director Cotel, Aye. Director Lewis, Here. Director McGallis, Aye. Director Melvin, Yes, Director Pang, Director Ross, Yes, Director Triani, Aye. Chairman Dillard? Yes. 13 ayes, two absent, and one abstention. Thank you. Uh, and that will be um, so reported. Um, item four is, uh, uh, is the public comment segment of the meeting. Uh, and I think we have uh, one speaker that is signed up today. If there's others, uh, wave your hand back there and let me know. Uh, but we have Garland Armstrong uh, from Access Living who's here. Uh, who wants to just come up and, and give us a, a word on graffiti on the Green Line. Um, good morning, Garland. Good morning, Chairman, and happy belated New Year to you. Last Saturday, I was on the Metro 
going to Elmhurst, when we stopped at Oak Park, right at the train yard at the Green Line, I saw some graffiti that was on the rail cars on the 5,000, and they, and they, and I don't know how long it's been there. And I told CTA about this, and then when I was there again, going that direction, it was still on there, and they haven't cleaned it out. So I really don't know what's going on, why they're taking so long to clean out after I called CTA and told them about this, and they haven't done nothing about it because, and some, I don't know who's doing it or how they're doing it, and they feel like they want to do it without ever being caught. So that's my biggest concern because there are some youngsters out there who would like to go ahead and do it without maybe overnight or something. They think they can get away with it so nobody can't find who they are or they might be wearing their ski mask so they can do whatever they want to do. So I just want to give you a heads up on that. And I don't know any other train cars in the, in the CTA's rail yard to see if they're going to try to do it again without ever being caught. So I think you definitely need to overhaul and check and see if they're going to try to do it again overnight without ever being caught or try to have their try to have their face blocked to know who it is because okay. they think they can get away with it. No, thank you. And I'll, I'll make sure um, graffiti is, is a, a bugaboo of mine as well. And, uh, uh, you know, Leanne and I and, and the staff will, will talk to the CTA and as well as Metro. And, and I see every now and then on the Eisenhower out as I get out by Oak Park uh, graffiti on the, the actual, not our tracks, uh, but the railroad tracks and, you know, it's, it, we're always trying to catch up to what I call the taggers, and um, you know, it's something that uh, that I agree with you on. We got to clean up as fast as we can. So, thank you very much, and happy birthday. Thank you. It's coming Saturday, the best birthday of them all for me. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Carol. And Any questions from the directors? Or I think no. Thank you. Thanks right. for being here as as always. Thanks. Uh, next uh, item of business is item five on our agenda, and that's the executive director's report of uh, Leanne Redden. Leanne? Good morning, everyone. Um, I will request a little bit of indulgence because I'm going to give you a quick overview on, some, on the accomplishments for 2018 and sort of a quick look ahead on some of the additional work that's going to happen. You already heard um, a report for, um, on the strategic plan. But as you all know, we begin every month at, with the same information. Or an update on the same topic. Um, the state of Illinois owes the RTA $392.5 million in a combination of um, ASA, AFA, and PTF. I know I hate acronyms, but that's basically the state's match to um, our debt service and then the public transportation fund payments. The state is about 12 months behind on the ASA fund, is about 18 months behind on the AFA fund, and the equivalent of about 6.7 months, to be specific, on uh, payments to us on the public transportation fund. The year-to-date cost, noting that it is only February, is uh, $576,000. So for those of you who are newer, uh, just a reminder that we carry short-term debt to essentially make the service boards whole on their operating funding to sort of um, stave off those delays and, and, and those late state payments. Uh, but there is a cost to doing that. Uh, we will continue to advocate uh, for a state capital investment program as well as continued state funding. Uh, the tra transit agencies have met with uh, the new governor's administration as well as legislative leaders and staff in the recent months to continue uh, that conversation, but I think it's sort of really renewing it in earnest as we've moved into the spring legislative session with hopes for some uh, a, a robust uh, budget and uh, capital program as part of this budget cycle, this uh, funding cycle. So we are really working hard on consistent messaging in and around the need for sustainable and long-term capital funding supported by the um, ongoing and stable uh, revenue resources that can be properly programmed and planned around. And that's really the key. It's not just sort of one-time capital infusion. It's sort of this long-term st stability and this predictability that they can sort of bank on and plan around. Uh, and while each individual service board is talking about their specific needs, it is all rolling up under what the, the broader numbers that you hear that we talk about. Uh, and we do have much more of a consistent message and a consistent effort moving forward. So uh, everybody's familiar with the budget process, which takes up a large portion of staff time and your time throughout our calendar year. 
but uh, throughout the year, a lot of other important work happened. Uh, we issued 150 million in two-year working cash notes to help manage the state's funding delays, as I also mentioned. Uh, we issued a $150 million bond to fund service board capital projects to keep some of the capital work going and to um, leverage funds to continue to support the federal dollars that are coming our way. Uh, we continue looking ahead in 2019 to uh, issue uh, plans to issue $250 million additional short-term debt to manage the continued state delays. Uh, we're looking further ahead. We plan to issue $158 million in 2020 and about $130 million in uh, bond proceeds in 2023 to continue support on uh, projects on the service boards on the capital side. Uh, and one thing to note, uh, the, both of the debt issuances last year reflected the very high quality of the RTA's credit rating that we continue staff and, and the board continue to sort of support and maintain and that has played out in sort of debt low cost in terms of uh, those debt um, issuances. I also want to mention quickly that the uh, project management oversight unit uh, last year in under B's group also oversaw 55 construction, maintenance and procurement um, of service board projects worth 5.6 billion and the RTA's role in that sort of PMO oversight function is to ensure that uh, and monitor that projects are staying within scope on schedule and on budget and you saw a report on that that we report out uh, at the end, towards the end of last year. You already heard a report on the strategic plan and the uh, annual update on the progress of that, so I, I won't belabor that. But it is really, I, I think, uh, one of the many examples of how the RTA with the service boards uh, have worked together to create a comprehensive and forward-looking vision for the transit system as a whole across the region. But besides the strategic planning work that you heard from from Jessica, uh, the, we are also working, doing a lot of work to help communities become more transit friendly. Our community planning program celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2018. And I think most of you recall that that provides both technical assistance to local governments and intergovernmental agencies to address both uh, local planning, transportation and land use issues. We encourage municipalities in the region to develop walkable and more sustainable communities in, uh, in and around our transit stations and along transit corridors. And that really, that program is very specifically focused to sort of push for future um, planning for the future, but also provides funding assist, uh, staff time and funding small funding assistant pots of money to achieve some of those results. In 2019, we plan to complete uh, five more studies, uh, including Maywood, Cicero, Robbins, Mundelein, and Chicago's South Shore community. Uh, those um, projects are open right now for public comment. And, uh, sorry, that's the ones that we were doing in 2019. So we actually have an additional nine projects that are listed here on the slide, I should say, uh, that are uh, available for public comment right now that will be brought back to the board for advancing um, you've already seen this list, but I would encourage, I just wanted to highlight that to encourage uh, the public, if they had any comments on those, to go on our website and provide any input or comments. Uh, there is much more detailed information available on the website as well. Other work across the region, uh, regional planning, we continue to work with service boards to make it easier for riders to find their way around the system. Last year we installed more than 130 signs at seven locations throughout the region. This is sort of part of the broader wayfinding uh, efforts. Other capital and planning projects in 2019 that we're looking at uh, include researching special financing tools used by other agencies around the country that have really uh, identified ways to more innovatively fund transit systems. We're launching a new uh, platform for the RTAMS, which is our data management uh, and data resource site website, uh, to make it easier to use and maintain. And that's available not just for the service boards, um, but for the public at large. Um, and to meet sort of the, the increasing demands for data across our region. We're updating our regional customer satisfaction survey and developing new ways to check in with riders frequently. There was a little bit of discussion under Jessica's <laughs> report on some of that as well. We're developing policy pieces also on autonomous vehicles as technology becomes more advanced in that space and how that might influence the transit system very specifically. 
On our mobility services department side, we continue to assist customers with disabilities and older adults on how to better use the region's transit system. In 2018, the Travel Training Program worked with over 250 riders with disabilities to help them very specifically navigate, learn how to navigate and use the fixed line services specific across CTA, Metra and PACE. <coughs> Our Mobility Outreach Program staff who are essentially embedded in the six counties across the, within the city and the six counties across the region worked with 225,000 customers uh, at either resource fairs, uh, community presentations, small group presentations to better explain the, art, the region's services uh, for people with disabilities and for seniors. We continue to provide certification <coughs> assessments to the, RTA to the ADA paratransit program for our two mobility, uh, through our two mobility assessment centres. In 2018, 19,000 riders applied for ADA paratransit services and there are currently 65,000 regional riders registered within that program. And lastly, the current, uh, currently approximately 400,000 customers enrolled in the RTA reduced and free ride programs. This year we'll have a new local, local vendor that's going to assist us in producing the cards and distributing those permits across the region to our riders. On the legal and compliance department side, they um, produced some and, and completed a lot of important work, some of which ends up sort of being behind the scenes. So I think it's important just to highlight a few of those things with you. But really their efforts are focused on the RTA's transparency, um, integrity, and, and so sort of broadly stated sort of uh, our, and, and our compliance uh, in all ways. In conjunction with the service boards and IDOT and the tollway, the RTA once again hosted the annual transportation symposium, which is the uh, business oriented uh, uh, event that we hold annually to foster uh, small minority uh, disadvantaged business owned uh, interests uh, in providing services across our four agencies and well and brought up with including IDOT and the tollway as well. In 2019, we're going to take a slightly refresh on that and we're going to look to do more small one-on-one -on -one and very project and uh, specific procurement specific efforts to engage small businesses and sort of talk to them more one-on-one um, -on -one in sort of a more of a workshop, small workshop format to try to mix things up a little bit. Uh, our procurement division also processed 200 purchases uh, in 2018. Uh, we expect to do similar volume this year. Uh, these procurements involved 50 DBE reviews and determinations by our regulatory uh, compliance officer. We also want to highlight our agency's purchasing plan, which we produce each year uh, for the goods and services that we intend to solicit. Uh, and th for, 20, for the next year or so, we intend those to cover things like uh, financial advisors, um, some construction management, community planning, consultation, IT services, uh, legal representation, and uh, in the intellectual property and IT areas, there's many more. Um, I encourage businesses to go on our website and look at the improved doing business page on our website to register so they can actually receive those notices as those, those solicitations come online. Um, we use that database to invite firms to come in and, and solicit business and to apply for opportunities to work with us. Uh, we encourage you to take a look at that purchasing plan too, just so you're aware of uh, what we're looking to do. Um, the paralegal and attorneys process dozens of freedom, for, freedom of information requests, manage uh, the destruction of nearly 200 boxes of documents in our ongoing document management efforts. Last year, our attorneys focused heavily on training, conducted a, a day-long conference with the RTA and the service boards, focused very, uh, a very detailed dive in on grants management. I think that was productive for all that um, participated. Uh, and then finally, our legal team continues to spearhead our efforts to collect past due revenues from retailers who have illegally avoided uh, remitting the appropriate regional RTA sales tax uh, and some of those efforts across the region. On the, uh, looking internally at some of the other functions that we have, HR and IT, busy year in HR. Uh, you may recall that we actually had uh, 10 Chicago Public School interns uh, during the summer. Uh, this is a picture of them doing uh, a bit of field experience. I think they were down at the 95th Street Station construction work at that time. 
Uh, and it was the students, I think, enjoyed their six week uh, activities with us. I think we learned a lot and it was productive on both sides. And a couple of them agreed to stay on and work with us uh, a little bit beyond the, the six week term of the program because uh, it was mutually beneficial for all of us and we look to embark on a, a similar effort this year. HR and legal also made work to make sure that uh, compliance, we were in compliance with the latest sexual harassment prevention, workplace violence, drug and substance abuse free environment, EEO and affirmative action plans. We also continue to improve our process here at the RTA uh, to make sure that we're, as we're implementing our new enterprise resource planning system or our ERP system, which is comprehensive across all our activities here at the RTA, that's a big effort continuing into 2019. Uh, our, uh, sorry, 20, yeah, 2019, what year are we in now? <laughs> Losing track. Our IT department also replaced all our desktop computers and rolled out new laptops. Nadine is showcasing one here to my left uh, across the entire agency. But this new equipment, uh, while provides some ability for staff to sort of provide a, and provide more of a mobile workforce, but I think even more importantly, it provides uh, improved cybersecurity, especially as we work in different environments, whether it be here uh, in a hotel, uh, in our home workspaces, or even as we're sort of traveling for business. So I think that that was a, a great step forward for them. Jessica touched on uh, some of the work that marketing and communications have been doing very specifically around the strategic plan work. Uh, and some of the work that we've done uh, partnering with the service boards. But also the unit last year worked to really expand our social media presence. Uh, our Twitter followers grew by 27%, our Instagram followers grew by 57%. It's a great way and a more increasingly important way to communicate with riders and people across the region as to not just how our transit system works, but sort of the roles and benefits of it. We also continue to push and publish blog posts on uh, Ride on Chicago, Ride on RTA Chicago .com. Last year we had over 16,000 views. Uh, we led some regional marketing and promotional work at such events as Chicago White Sox promotion for, Ap um, for Aptas Dump the Pump Day, which is a national event, and Car Free Day. We are also in the process now of working with the service boards to plan uh, and the new rebranded national effort, which is going to be called Get On Board Day, uh, replacing the Dump the Pump Day uh, that will be on April 25th this year. And I will say that the uh, kudo to the naming rights for that national event goes to our very own Susan Marcel, who is engaged at the national level with our APTA partners. And it was her submittal of Get On Board Day was the name that they decided to tag for this upcoming year. So little applause to Susan because she won't pat herself on the back for that, so I will. Um, of course, this unit is also focusing on uh, broader communication on our overall funding needs for the region. So as I wrap up, um, I want to close and I want to acknowledge the hard work of the RTA team that has uh, really under continued from last year but will continue going forward this year. I want to thank the board for your expertise and your commitment and your support. Uh, as well as the service boards for providing the work that they do. And most importantly, you know, with all of our efforts, it's focused on providing safe and reliable transit services across the region. 2019 is a new year, um, but our challenges remain much the same. The transit system is an invaluable asset that has allowed the region to grow and prosper, and yet we con continue to f struggle to find ways to fund it and support, for it, support it. The service boards and their employees have done an outstanding job uh, providing the reliable services with the very limited funds that we have available for capital improvements and on continuing tight annual budget constraints. I will note that yesterday many of you may have heard uh, the Governor did uh, release his uh, initial budget proposal for um, the next state fiscal year. Uh, and largely it is a sort of status quo budget, so we, would, um, we will anticipate um, at least at this point, uh, the same cuts that we have experienced for the past, uh, you know, holding the line of the same cuts that we've experienced over the last few years. But uh, with that, I will say that it, this is really just the beginning of the budget negotiation uh, in Springfield, and that those conversations will continue in earnest. And you know, there was indication, there were indications in the speech yesterday too, though, that if additional revenues, if the General Assembly does come forward mm -hmm. with additional revenues, uh, that budget outlook could look significantly different. So we will continue in earnest to work on that uh, for the benefits of the transit system. 
We continue to encourage collaboration and coordination across all four agencies, and we are always looking for ways to continue to improve, take advantage of emerging technologies, and provide the most efficient use of taxpayer dollars. However, in order to fund the region's system and to stay economically competitive, it is imperative that we find sufficient funding to maintain a trans transportation network capable of moving millions of people on a daily basis, and we shouldn't take all of that for granted. As we continue to pursue additional state and federal funding, we acknowledge that fixing this region's long-term transit funding deficit, the deficit won't happen overnight. And we hope that a foundation can be put in place in 2019 that will really set this region forward, in the, set it on the right path, the right direction as we move forward. And we continue to uh, work with the RTA board, the service boards, and all our transportation advocates and partners across the region and the state for that matter to really make some of this vision a reality. With that, I will end my presentation and happy to take any other questions that you may have. Director McGillis. The, the first chart you presented showed the um, $400 million that we are waiting to get from the state and so forth. Uh, the short-term borrowing that we have authority to do ceased on July 1st of 18, and we've had legislative proposals in to extend that authority for the last year or so. Yeah. And ultimately, we're going to be at a position where we're going to need to issue an additional borrowing to replace some of the debt that's out there. What is the next date that we would have to have this legislation in place? So it's on our legislative agenda now uh, for this is. current spring session. So we would need something to address that in uh, in isolation. That, that needs to pass in this legislative session. I know, but what, what date do What's we have notes come and do that, oh, that we so basically wouldn't be able to continue yeah. to float the delayed funding yeah. to the, to the uh, service boards? So um, we need to have this passed by the fall at the very latest uh, of 2019. The, the, and what we're talking about, just to clarify, mm -hmm. is the RTA has 100 million borrowing, short-term borrowing capacity. Um, however, since 2008 or so, there's been a 300 million increase in that uh, 100 million cap. So a total of 400 million available. It's been renewed every two years, basically without issue. Um, We've been trying to get this renewed since last, since last year. We are expecting that it will be renewed again, the increase. Uh, however, uh, in December, we have uh, $250 million that is due um, for the direct placement short-term borrowing. So we either have to pay that or we have to uh, refund it or you know refinance it, renew it. And then there's another $150 million that is due in May of 2020. So that's the total 400 million. Okay, so 2019 of December, and you have to have some knowledge. Authority be prior be to. Authority before that to start the process to Correct. do it. I, I think if we get within six months of that date, we should uh, notify our service boards because bottom line, we, we keep saying it's gonna be approved. I have. I certainly have every reason to think they would. Why wouldn't they? It's the debt that the state has put us in Correct. that we have to borrow to keep the agencies going. But again, our authority and responsibility, we can't do anything about it if they don't give us that right. legislative relief. So within six months, I think we, ne we have to send out a notice if we don't so have that approved so that people can start planning because it's not going to be talking about additional borrowing at that point. We'll be talking about how you cut. Uh, uh, 200 Co correct. Million or so, whatever. so we talk about it all the time. Just, just the CFOs and everybody's aware of it. So we do talk about it. They ask about it. What will we do? And as you know, um, there's the structure of the borrowing in these notes is such that it comes off the top. Right. So there's a cash trap, and the investors would be paid, and then that would reduce obviously what is available to distribute. We distribute about. Well, we distribute over a hundred million in sales tax to the service boards. We distribute an additional 30, 33, 35 million, depending, sometimes 28 million, and public transportation fund matches to that. So all of that would be affected by the cash trap. So they would be paid first. I don't see us going there. It has never been needed to enact that cash trap. 
Uh, but it is, it is a concern. Um, they're all aware of it, and, and we're watching it very closely. Yeah, because we had high hopes back in uh, 2018 that it was going to be resolved. You know, it was, but every time you, you move it, Jeremy would have a situation where they would attach a different bill to Correct. it. And Correct. And it just made it impossible to pass. And all I'm saying, we need to keep it uh, as a high priority because the time is getting to where we won't be able to say, oh, well, next year. <laughs> so you're saying December, but sometime before that, we need to have approval of this, or we need to start making some budget strategies as a board on how we're going to deal with that size of a cut. I mean, that's a massive amount. That, that's correct. Thank you. Jeremy, what are, what are they telling you on, on that particular issue? Um, we, we, no reason to doubt it's not going to pass. It's passed at, since 2008, every two years. It did pass two years ago. It was, of course, vetoed by Governor Rahner. Um, so it's been filed by Representative Zaleski, Chairman of the House Revenue Committee. So we fully anticipate, anticipate it's going to pass, but I agree we have to take those precautions. Here's the other thing. We only have that to cover the state delays. Should the state become more current, 50 million, 100 million, and, the, you know, you've seen it go down a little bit. We will keep paying down that direct placement. And so that's obviously the better alternative, right? Not to go have to go out and, and reborrow it. So we're also hopeful in, in that respect. Yeah. And that's, it is on our, that specific item is on our legislative agenda, but it's, it's almost a subset of the broader push. If, if the state becomes current and addresses our broader fiscal issues, this issue goes away. So we're kind of keeping both avenues open in that conversation. Yes, Director Lewis, good morning. Uh, this question is either for uh, Lynn or for Jeremy. Uh, since we last met, <clears throat> there's been a new legislature seated, and obviously a new governor. And I just wonder if there's a, um, a sense of the orientation of this, this legislative body relative to issues like support for public transportation uh, that might be different than what it was before, just in a general macro overview sense, uh, if you could give some, some flavor for that. Um, yeah, I think, in, I think in general there's going to be support for our issues here. I mean, obviously the state faces the same fiscal challenges it faced last year and years before, um, so there's going to be a lot of issues they're going to have to tackle. Um, but I do think the governor said in his budget address yesterday there's going to probably be a capital bill by the end of this spring session, so I do think some of these issues will be addressed. Are there major, um, were there major uh, legislative changes where, say, there were people who either were for or against transportation, which with the turnover in the legislature, there have been changes in those individuals, key individuals, not naming names, just in a general sense? Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to generalize, um, but I do think sort of the, the layout of the General Assembly now is probably more favorable to transit issues in general. Any other questions of Leanne? Uh, great. Thank you. Very diplomatic, Mr. LaMarche. Oh. <laughs> That's why he's now a government affairs guy. <laughs> You're diplomatic like, uh, like Mike Lewis. <laughs> so, all right. We'll move on to item number six, which is an update on the activities of the RTA Transit Access Citizens Advisory Board uh, from our friend Greg Pullman. Greg, I will tell you, last night uh, I was with... Uh, Karen Tamley, who is the uh, uh, the mayor's, uh, uh, the commissioner or, or the head of the mayor's uh, people with disability office. So uh, we're, we're talking some of your issues. So welcome uh, again. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, good morning, um, Director Diller and directors, RTA staff, and the public. Karen didn't tell you the story about Ruben stealing the grapes from from the table at the meeting we were at earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben anyway, will be healthy. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm here to give a brief overview of um, our advisory board meeting on January 7th. Um, we <coughs> had our usual standing committee reports, but th and then we had three major um, items presented to us. One was from Doug Anderson, who gave us an overview of the 2019 operating budget for the three service boards. And um, he also gave us a overview of the capital, capital budget, the five-year capital budget 
and um, and told, discussed a few of the projects that um, they that RTA has in mind. Um, the board, the advisory board, offered to give any support for um, that is needed um, to develop, you know, to promote a capital budget for infrastructure or whatever uh, other items are needed. The second report that we received was, am I not coming through? Oh. Um, now I got it. The second, the second report we received was from Michael who was talking about an upcoming study, innovative innovations study of the ADA paratransit. This is a partnership between RTA and PACE to take a look at take a look at the at at the paratr at the ADA system to try and contain cost addressing addressing um, current operational um, challenges taking a look at growth demand and cust and and customer um, I'm sorry and um, continued improvement. The, the purpose behind the, the um, study is to gather information, to come up with approaches to contain cost, take a look at overall, overall program services, and to, um, to develop, to develop an action plan. They're going to, um, this project will take place between March of this year and through September of 2020. I, as the chair of the um, advisory board, will be participating on it, bringing any questions or um, concerns of, the, of our committee. The last report that we received was a, a a report from the Metropolitan Planning Council. They are also conducting a mobile, a study for universal mobility. They're, take, they're taking a look at um, what infrastructure is out there, where are the gaps in the system, and make recommendations so that that all the infrastructure and services are available to all citizens. That concludes my report. Thank you, Greg, as always. Are, yeah. are there any questions of Mr. Pullman at all? If not, we'll make sure we have grapes for Reuben when he, when he comes back next, yeah. next time. <laughs> yeah, Jessica also told me I get to drive the first automated um, tra public transit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Greg, as, Thank you. Uh, as always. Thank you. Come on, Reuben. Reuben's the best. All right, let's move on to our, our action items. Uh, they are uh, item seven on our agenda is the approval of a consent item as it appears uh, here. Yeah, and before we do that, um, uh, Madam Secretary, let's add Director uh, Sarah Pang to the role. And if, take Director Duraney off. <laughs> okay, if, yeah, if, if uh, Patrick So we may left. need a, a roll call just to... Okay. Yeah, we'll do a roll call on this. Um, in, so it is the uh, the uh, resolution certifying it's seven A. The resolution certifying the financial results for the fourth quarter of uh, of uh, twenty eighteen. Uh, are there any questions or comments here? Uh, if not, can I have a motion and a second? Director McGowan uh, makes the motion. We approve this. Directed uh, second by Director uh, Friga. Um, and um, Madam Secretary, call the roll, please. Director Colson? Yes. Director Duranti? Yes. Director Frega? Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Higgins? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Lewis? Aye. Director McGallis? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Pang? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Troiani? Aye. Chairman Dillard? Yes. We have 14 ayes and 2 absent. Thank you, and it will be so reported. 
Um, item 8 is the approval of contract and expenditure items as they appear on our board agenda. Uh, there are three of them for consideration. Uh, 8A is an ordinance authorizing a contract for insurance brokerage services for loss uh, financing plans and, and also our joint self-insurance fund. Do um, you want to add Nadine or, or Leanne anything on that? It's pretty self-explanatory. It's A on again, um, as, as in the past. Um, 8B, if we can, if nobody objects, we'll just take all these together. 8B is the ordinance authorizing a contract amendment with Clarity Partners for web hosting and support services. Anything to add on on that? Um, that's, uh, I think, uh, a, a re-up or a, f a familiar contract with us. And 8C are the travel uh, expense reimbursements as, uh, as, as uh, directed by law. Any comments or questions on these? If not, can I have a motion to approve the items on, on 8? Uh, Director Groven moves that uh, we adopt these. Um, Ryan, is that okay? So, uh, seconded by Director uh, Ryan Higgins. Uh, is there leave for the attendance roll call on these? Um, seeing no objection, um, leave is granted. 14 ayes and 2 absent. Thank you. Um, item 9 is new business. Anybody have any new business uh, for, for today? Uh, if not, uh, it's hard to believe our, our next meeting will be in the month of March, so spring will be here. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, March 21st, uh, with committee meetings uh, being at, uh, at 8.30 uh, in the morning, followed by our regular uh, board meeting as usual. Uh, it's uh, how time flies. Um, adjournment. Uh, if there's any further business to come before the uh, RTA this morning, uh, if not, uh, Director uh, Colson moves. We adjourn, seconded by Director Pang. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah King. Douglas Troiani. Has left the conference. J.D. Ross. Has left the conference. 